Today, we're talking about travel products, and specifically this is a carry-on size piece of luggage from Carl Friedrich. This is the carry-on pro from them, and uh, I have a lot of really good things to say, and a couple, I wish things may be a little different. But we're gonna get into that. Uh, that said, this did get fully utilized on a trip that we just went on for two and a half weeks. It got packed and unpacked way more times than I think the average family would ever do on a vacation. But we'll go into that because that was all about testing uh, this specific suitcase. So this is the Carry On Pro from Carl Frederick. Let's take a peek. Now, I did wanna start real quick by giving you some background of what went through this suitcase and or all the suitcase that I tested on this past uh, two and a half week long vacation. Uh, we flew from my hometown to New York City. We unpacked and stayed one night in New York City. Then we had to pack back up, get on a cruise ship. Uh, it was a nine night cruise ship, multiple stops, but it was, you know, unpacked the entire cruise ship, obviously. Got off the cruise ship. Um, in Puerto Rico, uh, stayed one night in a hotel in San Juan, packed back up, stayed one more night in a hotel in Ponce, packed back up, went back to San Juan, one more night. Then we packed back up, got on an airplane back to New York, stayed two nights uh, at a hotel in Times Square, packed back up, went down to the financial district by the World Trade Center site, spent one night there, packed back up, got back on an airplane, and all the way out. Uh, it spent time on the New York City subways, quite a bit of time actually on it. It obviously got rolled around the cities uh, of San Juan and Ponce. And to be honest, it got used a lot. Uh, and so usually when I have a product that I did a small trip on and did a review on, this got put through its paces way more than average. That's the best way I can start to say this. So that's where we're coming from in this specific review. Now, my wife is the main person that utilized this, but I can obviously th this is my review. So it's all about my expectations of this and uh, using some of her feedback as well. There are a couple feedback and we'll get into those as well. But this is the Carry On Pro from Carl Friedrich. Now they also make a Carry On version, which is very similar. Difference is this has this front zippered pouch that essentially you can put quick access items in or like a laptop. So it pops open like this and uh, you can put, you know, things in here. So my wife kept her iPad in here. She kept um, some paperwork in here, things like that. Stuff that you wanted to quick have quick access and you may have to have access maybe while you're traveling or in the airport. That is what this front panel is for. It works good and it is, you know, semi-rigid, so it does have this plastic shell here that gives you protection on that. You can get a full, like, 16-inch MacBook Pro in here. Um, there's a lot of room in here, and I, it just adds to the, the girth of this suitcase. Um, so if you're on some of those more budgetary um, airlines that are really nitpicky about how big the suitcase can be, always double-check the actual dimensions of this suitcase versus what you can take. On American Airlines, uh, we had zero questions asked and we had zero problems getting it into any of the overhead bins or anything like that. So that is where we're coming from that perspective. Um, you do have these nice leather accents, obviously on the front here. Uh, the handles themselves are leather. They're just quick sponge type right there. And on the top, same exact thing as the, on the side, uh, nice leather wrap on there. Um, damage wise, it did take a hard fall uh, when we got off of our cruise ship and got into a taxi that took us to uh, the, um, actually took us to the airport to pick up a rental car. He didn't stack them very well in the back. As soon as he opened up the back of the van, this is the suitcase that came pouring out and slammed onto the concrete. And immediately it was like, oh, that was in a bad spot because it was literally right on the corner of the suitcase and it was in the front corner. So it was like, hopefully that didn't damage my wife's iPad. We were definitely worried about it. Didn't have any issues with that. I'll be honest about that real quick. Zero issues. Um, there is maybe a scuff mark from it. Um, it's right, it was it happened right here. Uh, but that's about it. It took it like a champion. Um, any of the small scuffs, there are a few small marks on the suitcase. So it's, in all reality, it's pretty well off of how well it did. And we're gonna get into some of the features on this as well 
because uh, most of the features are fantastic. Uh, and one of the features that actually makes one thing really good makes another product about it a little less uh, preferable, maybe the best way to say it. So let's get into the suitcase first. Um, so we, we already talked about the, the front here. This is what I would call a brief briefcase style suitcase where you just have these two levers right here that open up. They do have a custom code that you can program into them real easily. And you just literally pinch the sides and they flip up. So you can see from the side, they just flip at an angle and then it's like a briefcase. You just open it. Now we used on our trip, these lovely Ziploc style bags. I actually did a product, um, I guess unboxing and information about these. These are nice, they're very inexpensive. Um, half of these are probably from Timu. So uh, if that's anything to indicate about them, but they work great and they allow you to get as much stuff packed in here as possible. Cause like I said, this was the suitcase that my wife used for a two and a half week vacation. That in addition to a backpack. Um, so this had a lot of clothing in it. And to be honest, it was so packed full that every time we shut this, it would close to about here. And then we almost had to kneel on it to get it to come down and, and clasp. So we put a lot of stress on this suitcase, a lot of stress on the hinges that are back here. And they're actually really beefy hinges, probably one of the beefiest hinges of any suitcase I own or have at all. And I have, you know, a very expensive piece of luggage here with my Ramoa that does have three hinges, but they're definitely not as beefy as the ones on this Carl Friedrich case. These are some really solid stout hinges and they work really, really well. They gave no indications of buckling under the pressure and we put a lot of pressure on this thing. So uh, inside here, as you can see, and maybe I'll get a little bit different angle. Okay, so inside here, we have one side that literally just has this nice clasp and it's just a, an open area here. On the other side of this is that you know, area for your laptop or whatever have you, that's on the other side of this. So those two compartments are only soft sided between the two. So if you put anything on the bottom of this, you don't want to put something really hard and sharp to point into that. Uh, but that is uh, usually we, this is where we had clothes in those Ziploc bags. And then you have a nice strap here, nice thick, heavy strap that you can pull and cinch down. It's also uh, riveted on all four corners here, Really nice, really robust, had zero issues with it. Fantastic there. Other side, you have the similar strap system and you can take this off if you'd like to, but it actually has a compression style piece. It has, and it's real quick to remove. It just has these two pieces right here that slide onto the webbing. And so you can remove it. It is, does have a nice zipper pocket that you can put things in as well. And then of course, this side is literally the same. So you can use this on this side or this side, it doesn't matter. And of course I have that rotated. But once you put this in here and you just kind of slide the straps around that so it just kind of holds it in place. There we go. So you put all your good here and then this allows you to have a little more pressure in pushing down and compressing what you have here. You can also purchase another one of these to go on the other side if you ever wanted to, but that is something that you can do. It does come with the one in this suitcase and it works really, really well. Do have a couple small zipper pro uh, areas here for some small goodies along the, the spine of the suitcase. Uh, most suitcases have something like that. Works very, very well. And that's pretty much the inside of the, the the suitcase here. It works really, really well. Um, you can see the actual hardware itself actually is metal. So you can tell it's, it's very, very well built. And that's the big thing about this suitcase. It works really, really well and it's very well built. Last piece I wanted to talk about on here, I'm gonna snap that close, is the casters, the wheels. So you do have the double casters on each of the four spinner points, so it is a, it is a full spinner bag. Um, these wheels are have like a rubber coating on the wheel itself, literally rubber. Um, so you have a plastic wheel with a rubber outer coating, and they roll really well, especially when you have this this bag pretty well weighted down. These roll extremely well. So here's where the one caveat is that is better in one way and worse in another. Because they put this rubber compound on all, all eight of these wheels, it rolls 
extremely quietly. So of all the suitcases I had with me and anyone I've ever used, 100% the quietest rolling suitcase ever. It is really quiet, which is nice in, the, in that specific sense. However, because of this rubber compound, there's a little bit added resistance to it. So it did not roll nearly as well as some of the other suitcases that I had. Compared to, if, I, if I compare it to my Ramoa, Ramoa would kind of roll circles around it in terms of how easy it would roll in the airport. And if you were on anything other than really hard floors, like in most airports, to be honest, uh, if you're on any kind of hard carpeting or anything, these wheels would not roll nearly as well and you almost had to go to the tip and pull. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to bring up, the qu how quiet it was, it was great. But even when you're, you're pushing it down the airport, it doesn't push in like a perfectly straight line unless you're holding it in that straight line. It likes to kind of go at like a 45 degree angle. I have a video of it, of my wife just go, you know walking down, I think the terminal, but also even in the, the subway area, um, it just liked to go at that 45 degree angle. Really quiet though. I mean, it's extremely quiet and pushing it. And my wife had her elbow was hurting her. And whenever she got on a, a floor that wasn't as hard as like a, like a hard uh, concrete floor or something like that, um, she almost almost had to tip it because it was just it, the in, um, increased resistance was not as enjoyable. So that's the one thing about these rubber wheels. They are super quiet, but you do add resistance because of it. Last part about these suitcases is the handle. Um, and there's gonna be a caveat to this as well. So this has a standard telescoping handle uh, where you can have multiple, um, uh, you know, heights that you can set it to. Um, however, just like a lot of handles, it's just using these metal pins that are just holding the handle in place. And here's where we ran into a small issue. And it's easy now that I know about it to negotiate it, but I definitely wanted to bring it up. Inside the suitcase where this handle actually telescopes down inside, there's two pins here that are holding this top section and there's two pins right here that are holding this bottom section in place. My wife packed with a whole bunch of stuff and because we were packing for two and a half weeks, I'll be honest, most of this is not gonna pertain to most people because it's only because we filled up every square millimeter of space we had available in every single suitcase we took because of where those are and all the stuff that was jammed in there, everything was fine when the handle was down because that's how you pack. You pack with the handle down and everything was fine. But what happened is when she would push it up all the way up to the height and actually using it in the airport, there was enough stuff right here that was keeping this pin down here from fully engaging. And so it would engage just fine. But if she put any kind of weight on the handle and kind of maybe just, you know how you kind of stand at security maybe or something and you're leaning on the handle, it would all of a sudden just, just drop. And uh, she would, or whatever. Once I found out exactly what was going on, I mean, it fixes the issue. But that is one thing I did want to bring up. If you run into, and it's probably not just this suitcase. This is probably with a lot of suitcases out there. If you run into a situation where the handle keeps dropping, check to see how much stuff you have jammed right in this area. And, and of course, it probably depends on which suitcase you have too. But that is something I wanted to bring up. The handle itself, solid handle. Um, it's not too rickety at all. It actually works really good other than those pins and maybe that's a small design where you could put something in there to keep those pins ever from being uh, affected by what's in the suitcase but that's a small item but I definitely wanted to bring it up so that is the carry-on pro from Carl Frederick now this is the gray and cognac color they also have a gray and like a I think a brown and gray and black and then they have a black with black leather so they do have a, like four different color options with this specific suitcase um, that compression piece in here comes with one. You can add a second one. I think the second one's like 45 bucks if you wanna add the second compression one, but that's up to you depending on how you, uh, you pack. If you pack like we did using like the Ziploc type already uh, compressible stuff, the straps work fine. You don't need that, that second compression piece. This in the Carry On Pro as I show it right here, retails at 565. If you don't want the Pro model, meaning you don't want this front section and stuff, 100 bucks less, so 465. This is a very nice suitcase. We had nothing but great things to say about it other than the two small things that I mentioned. And both of those are mitigatable, but the rubber wheels, um, there's a benefit, but there's a cost to that benefit. And whether or not that, may, that pertains to you is uh, up to you. Um, in the end, 
we actually really did like this suitcase and the amount of stuff that we were able to get in this one actually second to none that we had uh, it carried the most out of the four suitcases that we had out of all of them 100 this had the most stuff in it and was able to accept the most amount of stuff um, also has the largest dimensions though so uh, Carl Frederick, you did a really good job of designing this suitcase. I really like it. Um, I think, to be honest, personally, having multiple different types of wheels, maybe use a little bit harder rubber compound so it's still quiet, but it rolls a little bit better on those less than perfect surfaces. But these wheels are silent. 100%, they are really quiet. Uh, and it did roll good. So, that is our take, or my take, on the Carl Frederick Carry On Pro suitcase. Um, I like it a lot, I really do. Uh, fantastic suitcase, and uh, if you have any questions or comments about it, please let everybody else know down in the comments section below. Like, share, subscribe on the channel if you can for me. I do have more suitcases that I'm reviewing that I actually reviewed at the same time I did this one. I did three or two other ones, so um, along with some uh, backpacks and stuff. So those are coming. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, like I said. And thanks for coming here to Tech Gooch. Catch you back here on another future video review. Hopefully we'll see you soon.